Today's screencast is all about how to put together the final draft of your Of Mice and Men essay. So at this point, you have opened up the screencast and it will cover how to prepare your heading, how to transfer your essay from the Of Mice and Men essay organization document to the Of Mice and Men essay final draft document, how to improve your vocabulary and transitions for your final draft, and also how to use Grammarly to check spelling, punctuation, and grammar before you turn in your final draft. What I want you to do right now is open up Of Mice and Men Essay Organization and Of Mice and Men Essay Final Draft. Both of these are located in Google Classroom. I'll start by showing you how to prepare your, your heading. So first you should have your Of Mice and Men Essay Organization out as well as your Of Mice and Men Final Draft. This part that says Sample Student will have your name. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your name here. <clears throat> I'll just go ahead and type it in. I'm going to type in sample, sample student. And then everything's been changed for you already, including the date that it's due. The last thing you'll have to do is go up here to where it says last name. And I don't want you to ch change the part that says one because that's automatically putting page numbers on each page for you. So just go ahead and put your last name here. <laughs> just like I did in the heading sample student, you'll have your last name here. And that way it will show up on every single page. It'll say student, your last name one, your last name two, so on and so forth. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to transfer your essay from this document into this document so that it looks more like an essay instead of a whole bunch of separate sentences in different boxes. And so you're simply going to begin with your introduction. It already is indented for you, so all you need to do is copy over whatever you have for your grabber, and you're going to put it right here. And notice that it's already double spaced for you, so you don't need to do anything there. Then you're going to take the bridge, and you're going to um, put it right after that one, and then you're going to put in your main claim. Like that. So your first, your introduction is already ready to go. Now you're going to press return and you're going to press tab because you want the second paragraph to be indented. And then you'll do the same thing for your body paragraph number one. You'll copy your subclaim. You'll put it here. Then you'll go on to your first evidence sentence. Hopefully you've already made all of the changes to these that I've recommended to you in my feedback on Canvas. And if you haven't, I would suggest that you make those changes prior to, to you know, moving it over so it'll be easier for you to find. And you just go from one part of the document to the other. And go ahead and pause for a moment while you do this, and I will fill in the rest and show you what the final will look like. So I'm going to do this for paragraph number one. I'm going to continue. Then I'm going to do it for my body paragraph number two, and then all the way including my conclusion. You might be surprised once you've transferred everything over how long your essay is. Uh, watch this. Up here is where the page number is, and notice that this essay is one, two, three pages, or almost three pages, two and a half pages. But it, it includes an introduction, it includes the first body paragraph, the second body paragraph, and a conclusion. My guess is that honors students, yours will probably be closer to a full three pages, uh, maybe even the beginning of four pages, since you have extra sentences that you are putting in each body paragraph. So there's a couple other things I notice when I look through my final draft. Um, first of all, I have some strange things going on. I have some colors that appear because I was using those colors here when I was writing my main claim and subclaims. I also noticed that in my body paragraph number two, I had part of it was bold, just like it shows here. And I don't want that to look like that in my final draft. And so there's a couple things that you need to do. So first of all, notice this font right here. If you click on it, this font shows 12 point font. And if you go down here, this font shows 11 point font. But this essay is supposed to be 12 point font. So I want you to go to um, edit, select all, and I want you to change it to Cambria 12 point font. In addition to that, I don't want any of it to be bold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change anything that's bold to not be bold. 
I also don't want to have any highlight, highlighted colors. And so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to go to highlight and I'm going to put none. And that will take away all of the highlights I had in there. And it will also take away all that bold that I had in the second body paragraph. So now our essay is probably longer. Look at instead, it's almost a full three pages just because we changed the font from 11 to 12 point Cambria. I already put in this as double spaced and I've already put in the correct number of one inch margins. So that part of the um, of, of your essay is already ready to go for you. The next part is going to be improving vocabulary and your transitions. And I'm going to show you how to do that by pausing mine to highlight a couple of things to show you. OK, to improve my vocabulary, one of the things that I would like you to do is to open up your of Mice and Men essay prep and scroll down to your list of synonyms, your task two, where you have synonyms for powerful and powerless. And then I want you to head over to your essay and I want you to look for, do a, a find and replace uh, search to see if there are any of the, like if you've used the word power too many times or powerful too many times, or if yours is more about powerlessness, if you've used powerless or powerlessness too many times, that's what this list is for. So the way you do that is you go to your document, you head up here and you click edit and you choose find and replace. Now mine happens to be, my essay happens to be about a powerful character. And so I'm going to start with the word power. And all I have to do is I have to automatically already what came up is the word power here. Now, what you can do is read that sentence and see if you can choose a different word to use. So this one says, when Slim exhibits power over Curly by expressing frustration at Curly's accusation and threatening Curly's reputation, the reader begins to realize, and I talk about what the reader realizes. The word power, I think in this case, could be replaced with another word. I think the word, and I look over here, I think the word influence would work. So I'm going to replace that with influence. So all I do is say replace, not replace all. I click replace, and then that will change this particular example of power. Um, actually, I think I accidentally did an earlier one. Uh, let me see if it did that. Let me close. Let's see. Let me pause for a moment. That's exactly what it did. It actually changed this word to influence, which I didn't want that one to be um, to be shown. So what it does for you when you click find and replace is it shows you every single place where that word is used. So you can see I used it four times right here in the beginning. And so it's important to change some of those so that you can show how um, how the essay, how you have an elevated vocabulary and that you are paying attention to trying to not sound repetitive over and over again. So in this case, I do not want to change this one to influence. So I'm going to click next and then it goes to this one. And when I read through it, Slim is the most powerful character because he is courageous enough to challenge people who have more power than he does in order to do what is right. And he is respected by his peers for the empathy he demonstrates. I don't want to change that one either. I think it belongs in the introduction. Uh, the word power is strong to use there, but I think I can change the next one. So I'm going to click next. And that brings me to this one. This is the one that I wanted to change. So in this case, I'm going to replace that one with the word influence and I'm going to replace it. So it automatically did that for me. And Slim exhibits influence over Curly by expressing frustration. So that sounds a lot better to me. Then I come down here and I see that in this case, it says which shows an unexpected switch and who has the most power. And I think in this case, um, because we're talking about who has power or influence over others, in this case, I think I could probably use the word weight instead. So an unexpected switch in who has the most weight. So I'm going to change this one to weight. And it, when I click replace, it will change that word up here. And then it will bring me down to all of these other powers that I have in my essay. I've got three, four, five, five more. So you would go through and you would read every single time you use the word power, and then you would replace the ones that you feel you need to. You do not have to replace all of them, but there are some that you can. And so use your synonyms and see if that would work. 
Now, if yours is about powerlessness, then you're going to put powerlessness up here. Or if you wanted to change marginalization, you could do that. Uh, but you can go in here and you can find and replace whatever you need. But notice I don't even use powerless at all in my essay uh, because I'm con concentrating on a powerful character. The next thing that I think would be really helpful for you to do is to look at transitions. So after you've looked at your vocabulary, then you're going to go to your evidence sentences and you're going to see if you're using the same transitions over and over again. And before I even start doing this, I want to pull up another document, which is my introduction to evidence sentences. We have saved it under the writing resources as block two intro to evidence sentences fall 20. So when you um, look at writing resources in Canvas, that's where you can find it. And particularly what I'm interested in on this page is these list of transition words. And remember, you also have a link to hundreds of more transition words in case you find yourself being repetitive. So I'm going to go through this one. I can't do a find and replace. I actually have to look and see, starting in my body paragraph, what transition words I'm using. So I can find that by if I if I search for uh, where my citation is, I know this is an evidence sentence and I've used a transition. So I'm going to go up to the beginning of this particular one and it looks like I used the word specifically okay so that's the first time I've used um, that transition and that transition makes sense I didn't use something like in addition uh, that would be for a second evidence sentence but I used specifically then I'm going to go down to my next one it looks like it is all the way down here and um, I'm looking for the beginning of this one Oh, here we go. Later on. That's a different one. Good. So I didn't repeat myself. For example, what you're looking for is, did you put specifically, specifically? And I didn't, so I don't have to change anything. Then I'm going to go to my next body paragraph. And in that body paragraph, uh, here's my evidence sentence I used as an illustration. So I don't need to change that one either because that's a third use of it. And then I'm going to go down to my last one in this example and I used in the end. And that makes sense also. So I have four different transition words. I don't have to change any of them, but I'd like you to ch check and see if you're using the same ones over and over again. The other thing to check is that you don't want this transition to say something like, um, firstly, because this wouldn't be your first example in the spotty paragraph. It would be your last example. And so in the end makes more sense or finally might have made more sense. So just pay attention to the order of the transition words that you're using as well. The second to last thing that I would like you to do is actually to change your title. So I wrote down at the very top, interesting title. And coming up with an interesting title can be very difficult, but it's a lot easier if you read your entire essay from start to finish. So what I, that's what I'd like you to do right now is pause and read your entire essay from start to finish and then come up with a title. Now that you've read your essay, you might be tempted to write something uh, simple like mine is about slim and I might say slim's power in of mice and men. That could be my title, but it's a little bit boring. It doesn't really say very much. So I'd like you to come up with something a little bit more interesting. And one way you could do that is you can revisit what you wrote in your introduction or in your conclusion or pull from some something that you wrote in one of your evidence sentences. If you look down at my introduction, I said, strong people, or I used a quote, strong people stand up for themselves, but stronger people stand up for others. And if you look at the very bottom of my essay, I talked about how the way people, a, a person treats another, especially the least among many, should be a measure of worthiness in all relationships, especially close friendships. So when I think about those together, I think a pretty simple title, but that's a little more interesting than Slim's Power and of Mice and Men would be something like Standing Up for the Marginalized. or standing up for those less powerful, or something like that. Um, I don't think it's like the best title in the world, but it's more interesting than Slim's Power of My Cement. So try to come up with something interesting that might catch your reader's attention. And then you are ready for the last step, which is to go run this entire essay through Grammarly. That's the next video.